In this video, we're going to learn how to take a plan drawing like this and turn it into an isometric diagram like this. We'll cover the basics of setting up this drawing and walk you through the entire process from beginning to the end. And this type of drawing can be easily done once you understand the rules and can become a really versatile diagram to have at your disposal. Now before we jump into the video, if you're new to the channel, my name is Carter and here we talk about landscape architecture education, visualization, and representation. So if that's something that you're into and want to learn more about, consider subscribing and following me over on my Instagram for more. Okay, so let's get started. So starting off, you're going to need to have a few tools. If you're doing this on paper, you're going to need a ruler, a 30, 60, 90 triangle, and some trace paper. And if you're doing this digitally, I recommend using the app Morfolio Trace because it has all of those tools built into the program. Next, what you're gonna need is your plan drawing and you're gonna wanna make sure that that plan drawing is set up at a 90 degree plan view. Then we're gonna start the setup of the drawing by drawing a horizontal line all the way across the lower base of our drawing. Then we're gonna choose our angle that we wanna be projecting towards. We can either do a 45, 30 or 60 degree angle here, but for the purposes of today, we're gonna to be showcasing a 60 degree angle. So to do this, we'll take our triangle and set it to 60 degrees and draw a line from the corner of our plan along that horizon line to set the drawing up for us. After we have this set, we're then gonna to wanna to rotate our plan to make the new horizontal line where that 60 degree line is now running along. So as you can see, we now have a new rotated plan that's ready to be drawn on. Now the last thing before we start is if you're on trace paper is you wanna make sure that there's some space to the plan north so that when we start to draw some vertical elements to this drawing, it doesn't get cropped out of the top of the page. But that's the basic rules to setting up this diagram. So now we can get started on actually constructing it. So the very first step for us to do is to actually outline the plan in all of the hardscaping elements and structural elements that we plan on projecting in this image. In this case, I like to outline the entire drawing so that way when we start to move things up in the drawing, we don't lose track of where it exists in the plan. And since this is a technical drawing, I like to keep this diagram really precise. So I tend to use a ruler and a straight edge wherever I'm making my changes or drawings. Now, once you have the plan outlined, the next step for us to do is to start actually projecting the images. To start projecting these images, we need to start by drawing vertical lines from each corner of our projected object. You wanna keep in mind the scale of the drawing here, and you wanna make sure that all of the vertical lines are of equal height for the object or structure that you're trying to project towards. So this is where that ruler comes into an effect for us. Now this is of course a little bit of try and error, but a pro tip for this is to look at the drawing as a whole and then consider how high things should be according to that view that you're seeing on the page. Now another thing to consider in this drawing is if there is a portion of the drawing that is higher than the rest of the drawing. This will require you to raise that entire area by a determined height before you then make another change to that layer. So let's say that you have a raised deck and that raised deck has some raised structures on it. You need to first raise that deck and everything around it to that height before you go and raise that raised planner in that deck. So to avoid this confusion, make sure you always start at the lowest elevation and work your way up in the drawing. Now, once you have all of your projections outlined, you can go ahead and start to connect the corners of them to start give it some shape. Now with this type of drawing, it's not actually a perspective, so there isn't gonna be a vanishing point to this drawing. So this drawing would actually never occur to your eye in real life. And that's just because there are, again, no vanishing points and everything that is projected is really just part of an orthogonal grid. So all of the lines are changing based on where they occur in the plan. But that said, it's a really awesome tool to have and it can really start to show your space three-dimensionally and show how everything is kind of working spatially rather than having to draw from one viewpoint or one vantage point in a perspective. You're able to see the whole site as one. Now that we have our structures and objects in place, we can now overlay another layer of trace and start to make our final marks. So like always, here is where we wanna take our time to make the lines really clear and really precise. 
For this style of drawing, it's also nice to have the line weight be very thin, but also varied between the different objects and the structures to show some overall line weight hierarchy. Another thing we can do in this step is to leave out the lines that wouldn't be seen from this viewpoint. So typically all of the lines that are in the back of our structures or objects. So you can see the drawing is really starting to take shape now that you have started to make some of your final remarks to them. But now that the meat and core of your drawing is done, the last step is to add some details to the drawing to give it some life. So in this drawing, we're adding some trees and some paving patterns to start, give some difference in materiality and some spatial organization to this drawing and space. Now again, since this is a diagram and not a perspective drawing, we can go into as much detail or as little depending on what we're really trying to show in the diagram. So for the purposes of this video, we're really just trying to showcase what can be done with a drawing like this and how you could potentially take it even further if you wanted to. But a lot of times with this type of drawing, less can sometimes be more because we're really just trying to show spatially what's going on rather than talking about and showcasing the materials and the truth and reality to the drawing. Now the last step for us is to add some people and add some muted toned out color to our drawing. So in our case, we want to be drawing people all over the place and we want to draw them varied and scattered throughout to kind of show collection, collaboration, or areas of traffic or flow. And finally, we're gonna add a couple colors just to give some expression and some animation to the drawing. And like I said, this drawing is actually really easy to follow once you understand the couple of rules that it has and can be carried out from beginning to end in just a couple hours. This drawing took me about two hours to do. And of course, with the digital world, this drawing can be perfected and made really, really pretty. But if you don't have the time to make a whole SketchUp model to take that view from, then this is a great alternative to do. And not to mention that you're going to understand how to actually create this drawing, which is going to be able to make you have a better diagram and better drawing in the end digitally as well. But here's an example of what the drawing could look like at the end of it all. And if you wanted to take this diagram one step further and make it into a sequence, you could do that as well. A drawing sequence can be supplementary to the drawing as a whole and can showcase the workflow and ideas as they went throughout the drawing. So here we're showing a 2D plan in the upper left and then we're showing the big isometric drawing that we created in the center. And then we're showing an exploded version with the plan and the isometric on top of each other to showcase how it all fits together. But that's how to draw an isometric diagram from a 2D plan. And just remember those couple of rules that we talked about in the beginning, and you'll be going on to making these drawings in no time from 30, 60, 45, whatever projection that you wanna do. So I hope that you guys found some value out of today's video. I know as an undergrad that I was never taught how to do this and it was really hard to figure out how to do this on my own. So I really wanted to make this video for you guys in case you are interested in making a diagram like this. So if you found this content helpful, be sure to drop a like and share it with a friend who could use some help or some instruction on this type of drawing. If you follow along with me in the drawing, feel free to head over to my Instagram and send me a picture or image of what you created. I would love to share uh, your guys' work on my page and give you guys a platform to showcase your ideas on. But that's all for me today, so be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and be sure to tune in next time. As always, take care, be safe, and I'll see you next time. Peace.